from the new thing. So I'm going to actually move the app.xaml and reposition it up into each head. So we've got a unique one for each of the heads now. So that removed that from the share project. So now we've, each of my heads have got their own app.xaml. Uh, so there's the other stuff that's in the shared project still though, some assets, some common files and the data. So now then let's build again and see where we are. Okay, so uh, my uh, startup app.xaml.cs is looking for main page, but actually the pages I want to use, I'm going to start by copying in from the Windows Phone 8.1 project all the pages. Copy them from there and I'm going to paste them into the UAP project. So make copies of them. And then I can go in having done that. Yep, still got to fix that main page thing. So uh, let's go up into app.xaml, into my start at my launch logic. And scroll down and then we'll find, here we are, this is where it's going for main page. So I'm going to change that now to be hub page. So that will launch directly into, just got to fix up the uh, reference to that, using hub app one. And now we can, uh, good, that's resolved now. And now we can run that on, on the phone emulator, see how we get on. Try and build it. Got no compilation error, so all that shared code is just great. And then I'm going to uh, run it on the emulator. Let's see how we get on. And oh, we've got an exception. Let's have a look at what that exception is. This is a XAML unhandled exception. So this one is because it cannot find a list view item text box style resource. What is that? Well. In the uh, Windows Phone 8.1 project templates, it used a lot of styles. So I've actually created myself a style dictionary, which redefines all those missing styles, but uses UAP equivalents uh, for them. So this is, uh, this is that style dictionary. Um, so you can see this, there's where the styles are defined. So they can now be used directly. I, it means I can use them directly in those pages in my UAP project. So I just need to merge that uh, dictionary in, which I do like this, resource dictionary. And inside that, you need to merge in, merge dictionaries, and then we add in the one I've just added, which is a resource dictionary, uh, source equals, and then the name of it, which is uh, phone, 8.1 migration styles.xaml. Now with that in, now that those pages, we should be able to pick up the styles that it were missing from the uh, generic.xaml that's uh, provided for UAP. And yeah, straight away, okay, there's a bit of a styling. I need to fix those styles up a little bit, a bit big on that one, but uh, we've got a working app straight up. Oh, apart from the fact you saw I hit back there, and it went straight back and exited the app. So my back key handling is not working. What's that all about? Well, uh, that is because the back key handling in this particular app anyway, is all handled up in this file, Navigation Helper, which is one of the common files you often get in 8.1 projects. And this is where the back key handling is there. And you can see it's there's a hash here for Windows Phone app. So it's only being included for a Windows Phone app. So clearly it's not being included for um, uh, for our UAP project. So what do we do here? Well, one, one thing we could do is uh, have a sort of a three way hash if at this point. So top one is if Windows Phone app. This bit is if we're a Windows app because that's keyboard and mouse navigation. And then also let's switch that to you see Windows Phone gets that. Windows UAP has nothing at the moment, so we need to include the appropriate code for um, our UAP app. So we put another hash elif there, but this one is Windows underscore UAP, which is the uh, compiler conditional that's defined for a UAP app in the project properties. So now we can start putting in effectively the equivalent of what we've got above, but what's using the uh, Metadata, uh, metadata API information API to find out at runtime whether we're running on a phone or not. So 
that needs the type in there, which we we'll just copy and paste from there, which is the windows.phone.ui.inputs.hardware buttons. And if that is true at runtime, then we want to hook up a event handler for hardware back buttons back pressed. Um, and hash shelf, no, I'm at the wrong place. And if we're not running on a phone, then basically we want to do the other one, which is all of the stuff that only applied to a Windows app. So it's kind of doing the same thing, but at runtime. Now, this is not resolved. Why is that not resolved? Um, that hardware buttons is in the mobile extension SDK. So we need to add a reference for that. Go to extensions. Here's Windows Mobile Extension SDK. So that's now been added. So in a second, that should, there we go, it's resolved. Um, still need to f sort out that uh, event handler. Similarly here in uh, this bit of code down here, we do exactly the same thing. If uh, Windows app, do that and hash LF, uh, Windows UAP, then we need to do the same old thing. So uh, if Windows dot foundation dot metadata dot API information is type present and again obviously it's that Windows Phone UI input hardware buttons type we're interested in using if that's present then we unhook the back pressed event handler um, otherwise we do the other stuff so we're running on desktop and PC. Fine. Now we need to resolve this hardware buttons event handler, which at the moment is excluded here because it's hash if Windows phone app. So this now actually we can include this both if it's a phone app or it's a UAP app. So we can just include this because it won't cause anything to a UAP app running on desktop. It won't. The fact that this is here won't break it. Um, so that's that one. And then all this stuff looks to be the PC desktop code. So uh, let's just change that. Well, hash end if that first one. And then change this to be a hash if Windows app. Or again, UAP. So actually, you just want to include all of this stuff if we're in UAP because both cases will be applied that only these event handlers will only be called at runtime anyway so that's fine and that's all good so now we should find that our back key handling on the phone project will work just great um, apart from that an error let's try again right deploy succeeded this time yeah and there we go and we can click on an item go back and this time it goes back properly so we're all good everything's good uh, still need to fix the styling up a little bit on that page, but um, so let's try this on the desktop, see whether it runs on there. So here we go, we're trying to run. Okay, so the UI shows, but and we've got items, uh, but there's no back navigation, and clearly that's not a great success. So to get that to a point where we can do something, I'm going to create a new folder device family dash desktop. There we go. And then I'm going to put into there views that will be used only for PC, laptop, desktop. So let's go in to get a copy from the 8.1 Windows app. Let's go and get the XAML views, but not the code behinds, just the XAML views. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to place them into this folder. So let's add those in. I'm going to get the right folder. There we go. Paste. Add them. So it's just the XAML pages, not the code behind. It's going to share the code behind. Use the same code behind file that's used for the phone, the, the main views, which are the ones that are for the phone. Let's try that now. Uh, no, we've got an exception because there's an event handle. Hub section header click is missing. So we've got to merge together the old code behinds effectively. So let's go off and find that, um, that event handler. Here it is. Hub section header click. So we can copy that and I'm just going to paste that into the code behind, the, the merged code behind, if you like, that we've already got. 
which was copied from the phone originally. Uh, so let's go and pop that in, and that should be good. Now, uh, also while we're here, we might just just check because uh, also in, in load state, this is the logic that loaded in state from data for the phone head. What about the one for the um, desktop? Let's go and check that. It is ever so slightly different. It's getting a particular group uh, for uh, the for the desktop app. So let's just copy those couple of lines as well and merge them into our combine our, our merged code behind. There we go. Now, hopefully with this, we should have a bit more joy. Let's run this on the desktop. Well, OK, it runs. That's pretty good. Um, sharp eyed amongst you will notice. Well, OK, there's some layout problems. So you're, some of these styles are too big. Um, um, and actually, everything is a little bit too big. So there is a bit more work. So there's no such thing as a free lunch with this stuff. You have to go in and work on your layout to, to make it. It's not going to be a simple copy and paste from 8.1 through to 10. So we need to make a few little changes uh, just to give you an idea. I'm not going to go and do all it now, but all of it now, but just so give you an idea of some of the stuff we could do. Uh, change the uh, font size of uh, some of these text blocks so they're a bit smaller. Uh, so let's put that one in here. Uh, and actually, as well as this, ignore the blue squiggles, that's just a designer glitch. Uh, so that makes that a little bit, yeah, maybe 24. And actually, what I should do with this really is go through and all the sizes, so all the discrete sizes on there, like that opening grey square on the left, the pane, the size of that. Anyway, our text size is pretty good. Uh, but uh, all of that stuff there is, um, and, and that's all working. Um, all the, pit, the pitch, the effective pixel pitch is actually um, four fifths the size uh, in UAP uh, that it was on 8.1 for Windows desktop only. This is a side effect. Let's just um, change that to get our uh, layout of the grid view a bit better. Make max width to that 600. And OK, we've now got a single column, which wasn't quite what I had in mind. So let's just change that again to something a bit bigger, maybe 900. And hopefully that will now look about right. So there we go. So uh, there we, now I've got uh, block two, two columns there. So you can play around with the layout. Yeah, the, so the effective pixel pitch has changed. So you have to go through and modify all of your margins and positioning uh, by f by uh, four fifths uh, in order to get back to what you had on 8.1. But like I said, you know, you're going to have to work on your design. It's not just as copy and paste. Uh, you can get something that basically works and then use that as your starting point. But you've got a little bit more work to do. OK, that's that. OK, so there we go. So you saw a very quick look about how, how that Impressive demo, Andy. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah? Thank you. So let's just review what we saw there in this session. Uh, we went, uh, we looked at the, where your starting point might be in migrating an existing uh, app onto 10. Um, we then actually went through looking at our little my upgrade utility that helps to oh, yeah. do the conversion of your project file and your app manifest. And then we ran through those additional migration steps that you, uh, you, you need to think about. Uh, and then finally, we just looked at the migrating 8.1 universal apps. It's not always a green field where developers are starting from. Sometimes they do have investments they don't want to just throw away. We don't want them to either. We respect the investment that they've already made. And here are some paths, depending on which direction you've gone, to build your store application. It's a pretty, pretty great and comprehensive story. And then you can come on to Windows 10 and start targeting UAP. And we can allow Windows as a service to constantly be upgrading. But we've targeted UAP. That remains st constant for us. Indeed. And once you're on UAP, you can have access to uh, lo loads of great new features that have been built into the, the new platform, which are going to be covered in some of the other modules. So uh, please keep watching and come and find out about some of the great new stuff you're going to be able to do with your Windows 10 UAP apps. Hi, this is the Developer's Guide to Windows 10 Preview. Uh, I'm Andy Wigley, a technical evangelist based out of Microsoft in the UK. 
I'm Jerry Nixon, also a developer evangelist based out of the United States in Colorado. Uh, this session we're going to talk about extension SDKs. So these are SDKs that allow you to extend a universal app platform project and take advantage of features that are unique to specific uh, target device families. For example, it might be Xbox or it might be phone or you name it, a whole list of them. All right, well, let's look at what we're going to talk about. First, I think it's, it's going to pay to look back at Windows 8 and look at kind of how we did it in Windows 8, because that will help explain how we do it in Windows 10. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Looking back at Windows 8, .x, let's say it that way. So it used to be that we would build our applications with multiple heads. Each head would target its own binary or target its own device and deliver a binary to that device. If you're going to write a phone application, then you would have a binary for the phone and so forth, right? And so now we're changing that, right? Okay. The, uh, the, the tooling that we had in Windows 8 was actually pretty terrific. So right here you can see that at the top you could switch the context. So which binary do I want to see? What's the context I want to go to? In this case, it's uh, Contoso Cookbook or Contoso Cookbook Windows Phone. And it would go back and forth between desktop and phone that way for me. And when, it, when you would switch between them, sometimes you would get build errors. But even IntelliSense would help us as well. We would get hints along the way. These little warning signs would show up and say whether or not an API that I was using, for example,